Well, congratulations to Arsenal. Incidentally, their young goalkeeper, Reese Wilmot, was coached by our very own Bob Wilson. Now then, if you've not already made your choice, I hope you're thinking about the man or woman you regard as the outstanding sports personality of 1982. Our review of the year programme, when we announce the winner of this trophy, is coming up on December the 12th. That's not much more than a fortnight away. And you must get your vote into us by first post December the 10th. Now, we've already made one or two suggestions for you, such as Ian Botham, Hurricane Higgins, Steve Cram, Lester Piggott, Barry Sheen, and Daley Thompson. And here now are a few more names you might like to consider as suitable candidates. The man who shattered the 5,000 metres world record, Dave Moorcroft, Commonwealth Games gold medalist. John Anderson in front of me, Moorcroft's coach, already cheering Commonwealth gold. A devastating finish by David Moorcroft as he stretched 20 yards away to take the gold medal. Cricketer Bob Willis, successful captain of England in series against India and Pakistan. And that's edge and it's beautifully caught. What a great catch that was. Triple jumper Keith Connor, double gold medalist in the European and Commonwealth Games. Oh, and he's almost in the pit on that one. That's an enormous jump and it's close to the world record marker. 17 metres and 81 centimetres, 58 feet, five and a quarter, the greatest jump at sea level of all time. Northern Ireland striker Jerry Armstrong voted Britain's best footballer in the World Cup. Jerry Armstrong, what a worker he is. Striding away there with Hamilton to his right, Norman Whiteside up on the far side of the area. Still Billy Hamilton, he's got past Tendilio. And after that, Armstrong! Swimmer June Croft, triple gold medalist in the Commonwealth Games. June Croft is slightly ahead, but Wickham is closing the gap. Wickham's coming back at Croft. Croft now has 15 metres to go, and she's going to hold it. June Croft goes into the last five metres, and she's going to win her second gold medal of these Commonwealth Games. June Croft, Tracy Wickham is second. And the man who's proved he's still a world-class sprinter, Alan Wells. This time they go, and Wells got away well. Also to Cy Williams and Narrick, and it is Wells now in tremendous battle with Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson of Canada, and Wells fight it back. Wells fight it back all the way, and Wells is there with Sharp in the photograph. But Alan Wells has produced, at the end of a season of disaster, I believe a golden moment. And that it certainly was. So there you are, just a few of the people you might care to consider for the Sports Personality of the Year Award. But I must say it again, the choice is entirely yours. It can be one of those we've mentioned or someone else completely. It's your vote that counts, and this is how you vote on the special coupon you'll find in the Radio Times. And remember, we also ask you to give the reason for your choice. And for the sender of the best answer, there's a prize of a trip for two, all expenses paid, to the television centre here in London on the night of December the 12th to join the audience for our gala programme, Sports Review of 1982, when we look back over the year's outstanding achievements and find out who's been voted Sports Personality of the Year. Splendid night, I can promise you. Now, before we close, tonight's headlines. In the Milk Cup, England's Steve Cottle gets one of the goals as Manchester United beat Bradford City 4-1 in a third-round replay. But Manchester City lose 4-0 at Southampton in another replay with substitute David Puckett getting one of the goals with his first touch of the ball. And defender Dave Watson scores twice as Norwich come from behind to beat Sunderland 3-1 and earn a fourth round tie at Liverpool. And in our featured football tonight, Arsenal win the national five-a-side championship at Wembley for the first time, beating Aston Villa 2-0 in the final. Good night. <laughs> This week's television coverage of football will be one of the subjects discussed by Ludovic Kennedy and his guests in Did You See on Friday evening on BBC Two at 7.50.
With Christmas in mind, you may like to know about BBC Television licence gift tokens, which make acceptable presents for any occasion. Ordering them is very simple, just use one of these distinctive blue forms, which you can find in any post office. In two minutes, there's another case for David Jansen as Detective Harry O. First, the news headlines from Michael Burke. The inquest on nurse Helen Smith was abruptly adjourned when her father accused two men of her murder. Mr Ron Smith interrupted proceedings to say, I am accusing Arnott of the murder along with Texier. Dr Richard Arnott was the host at the illegal drinks party in Jeddah where Helen Smith died. Frenchman Jacques Texier was one of the guests. The inquest was resumed later. Much of the day's evidence was given by a German sailor who said he'd been surprised by the amount of whiskey Helen Smith had drunk. Commander Michael Trestrail, the Queen's former personal detective, was not a security risk, even though he was indulging in promiscuous homosexual activity. That's the conclusion of the inquiry, headed by Lord Bridge. The inquiry says it was right to accept the commander's resignation. Mr Whitelaw has accepted the report's suggestion that the Home Office should give further guidance on positive vetting for police posts. Commander Trestrail wasn't positively vetted until three months before he resigned. In Northern Ireland, a judge's daughter, Jane Watt, had a narrow escape as she drove to work. Security forces spotted explosives attached to her car as she was about to drive into the Crumlin Road courthouse. The INLA say they planted the bomb and their target was her father, Ulster Circuit Judge Roy Watt. A man has been shot dead by police in County Armagh. A patrol noticed suspicious activity in a building just outside Lurgan. Police say they went to investigate and were confronted by two men with rifles. They opened fire and both men were hit. One died immediately, the other is seriously ill in hospital. The Israeli Prime Minister, Mr Begin, has been warned by the Commission of Inquiry into the Beirut massacres that he could be harmed by their findings, and he's been given another chance to appear and submit more evidence. The Commission issued similar warnings to Defence Minister Ariel Sharon, the Chief of Staff, and the heads of the Intelligence and Secret Services. That's all from me. Good night. Now on BBC One, David Jansen stars as Harry O, about to play some dangerous street games. <laughs>